Hey, Tony Moreland here, Samsung Developer Program. I have got a tutorial video that I think you guys are gonna love. This actually was a request that someone left a comment on one of my other videos, and that is, how do you create an animation for the step counter? Let me show you. So on a Galaxy Watch, users can set their step goal, how many steps they take each day. And then, as the user gets closer to that goal, you as the developer of the watch face can have different animations play. This is a great way to have a little fun and make an engaging watch face. All right, so let me first show you the final watch face and then I'll show you how this is done. So I've got this great little rabbit here that's walking along and when the user reaches 30% of their goal, the rabbit starts to run. And then when the user reaches 65% of their goal, the rabbit starts to jump. And then when the user reaches 99% of their goal, the rabbit is tired. <laughs> but at 100%, he goes ninja. So that's our animation. That's how it changes as the user reaches different goals. All right, so the first step is to create your animation. And because Galaxy Watch Studio does not allow you to import animated GIFs, you have to import the files as separate PNGs. So you're gonna use a program like Photoshop or Illustrator to create your animation files, and that's what we're gonna import into Galaxy Watch Studio. And it's important to name the files with a sequence. So you're gonna to wanna to add a number at the end of the file name, one, two, three, four. That way, when you import the frames together, they appear as one animation in Galaxy Watch Studio. So I'll first start with a new blank Galaxy Watch Studio project, and I'll go over to the sidebar and click Animation. And then you'll need to navigate your hard drive to find your folders of your animations. And the first animation I'm gonna bring in is Walking. So I'm gonna click the first file name while holding the Shift button on my keyboard, and then click the last, and that will select all of them. And then click Open. And you'll see all of those individual files came in as a single animation. Now if I hit the play button over here in the run window, you'll see I have my walking rabbit. Okay, to keep things organized, I am going to rename this animation layer to include the word walk. All right, let's bring in another animation. So now I'm gonna bring in run. Clicking the first file, holding the shift button, and then clicking the last so that it selects all and it brings in my running animation. There we go. Now we have our running rabbit. I'm going to rename that layer. Bring in another animation. This animation will be jump. Holding down the shift button, clicking the first file, clicking the last file and clicking open, there is my jumping rabbit. I'm going to rename that by adding the word jump to the end. One more animation to bring in, and that is falling. Now you'll notice I've got a lot of layers here for falling. The reason is, is that the first 20, almost 20 files, they're all the same. It's the same bunny standing up and that just allows for a little bit of a pause before he actually falls. And then at the end, you'll see I have got, oh, about a little over 10, 12 uh, files of just the bunny laying down. Again, adding pause to the animation so that it's just not a continuous loop of him following. So. Clicking on the first file there, holding the shift button, clicking the last, open. All frames will be brought in. And you will see we will have our falling bunny. Awesome. I'm gonna hit pause over here on the run window, just so that we don't have that animation always looping. Renaming the falling animation with fall. And if you remember, the last instance of this animation bunny is that ninja kick. That actually is just one 
image. It is not an animation. So I will bring in just an image by clicking the image icon here in the sidebar. I will navigate my hard drive to my subfolder with my animations. And I will go to the kick folder. And this just contains the one rabbit ninja kick. Beautiful. All right, so let's align all of our bunnies nicely to the watch face. So I'm going to hide them all except for the kick by clicking on the eyeball symbol with the line through it. That hides all of our bunnies. I think the uh, ninja bunny looks perfect to me, so I'm going to lock that bunny in position. Let's look at the walking bunny next. So walking bunny is almost perfect. I'm just going to click and use the cursor on my keyboard to just move him up a few pixels. Lock him into position. The running bunny. All right, so I'm just going to click and drag this running bunny, making him a little bit higher than where the ground would be. I'm going to lock our jumping bunny. Looks like maybe he would have lined right about there. I do recall that the jumping bunny does jump out of frame. I'm going to hit my play button over here. You can see he's kind of jumping up above, but that adds some nice dimension. Okay, so let me uh, lock the jumping bunny. Then the last bunny is the falling bunny. Let me hide some of these others just so that I can get an idea of where that falling bunny starts. Using the keyboard, I'm going to position this guy right about here. Let's hit the preview. Nice, tired bunny. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got all of our animations in position. Gonna lock them. It's important to always save your projects. And we'll hit yes to this. So the way that you control this animation to appear and not appear at certain times based on the step counter goal is you need to add a steps timeline. So if you notice down here in this tab where it says timeline, there's a plus symbol. Just click the plus symbol and then select steps percentage. So what this is, is a steps percentage timeline. And if you notice, it starts at zero and goes all the way to 100. Okay, and this will allow me to either turn off or turn on different layers. So I have to activate them first. So what I do is I click anywhere and select vertically down. This selects all of the layers. Then I right click and select activate. So what this has done is this has turned on all of the layers to appear during all of the percentages of the steps. So I find it easier to first turn them all off. Select all instances of these layers, right click, and select hide. So now we've turned them off. So for the initial 30% of the steps counter, I'm going to select, click, drag to highlight those instances up to 30%. Right click and select show. Then I'm going to go to the run layer, click, and I'm going to drag, let's go to 60%, right click and select show. Then for jump, we're going to click just after 60% and go all the way up to 98%, right click and select show. And then the fall, remember, is only going to happen at 99%. So I've just clicked that one box that represents 99%. Right click, show. And then once you've reached your goal for the rest of the day, your watch face will show the ninja bunny kicking. So on that layer, I select that last box. Right click and select show. So now when I drag this timeline, you'll see our bunny goes from walking, to running, to jumping, this is the falling, and lastly, the ninja kick. All right, so let's take a look at how this animation works. So I'm going to come over here to the run window, hit the play button, you can see he's walking along. And when I drag this slider up to beyond 30%, he starts to run. 
when I go beyond 60%, he starts to jump. When I reach 99%, he will fall. Notice there's the pause. And lastly, once the user has reached the goal at 100%, we have the ninja kick. All right, so now let's add a few more elements to this watch face. So I'm gonna go back to the regular timeline and I'm gonna bring in a digital clock. So clicking on digital clock over here in the left sidebar, coming over here to the ICU format. I want this just to be single digit when it shows the hours one to nine and then double digit from 10 to 12. And you do that by just doing a lowercase h. So I've highlighted all of the letters in the ICU format and I'm just putting in a single h. And let me resize. I'm gonna reposition. And I'm gonna increase the font size of this to, let's try 120. Let me make that text box just a little bigger. I'm gonna change the font to watch Apple Mint. And I am going to just reposition to there. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in one for minutes. Let me just copy paste my hour so it makes a new layer. And all I have to do is come to the ICU format and make it a double M. I want the minutes to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna change this to 80. And to help with the alignment, I always like to take the minutes and left align. It's just less jumping around of the digits as they change throughout the day. So there we go. I'm gonna move my step percentage slider back under 30% so that we can just see him walking along. Perfect, okay. So since this is a step counter, we do want to know what our steps are. So I'm gonna bring in step counter, clicking the text icon here in the sidebar and going to step counts. Okay, this will bring in a step counter. Now on this design, I don't want the word steps to appear to the side of the step counter. I want it to appear below. So I'm gonna have to remove it from this instance by clicking on the drop down for display type and selecting just the percent D. This will just show the number. I'm gonna increase the size. So let's go to 50%. Um, change the font to watch Apple Mint. I want the color to be a little different so it stands out from the digital clock. I think I'm gonna use that, that pink that I see in the, in the bunny's ear. So let me scroll down to color and I am going to change that to FF9CCA. And no, I don't have all of the hex codes memorized. I just know that that was a nice pink. Now, next I want to add the word steps. So I'm gonna move up the digits here and I'm just gonna bring in just some regular text, normal text that says the word steps. All right, let's reposition down here using the keyboard to scoot the word steps up. Changing the color to FF9CCA. Changing the font to watch Apple Mint. And font size, let's go with 20. Beautiful. Just gonna do a quick save of my file. And now when my step count increases, let's just go like to 350, you can see we've got some nice display of the numeric value of our steps. All right, hope you enjoyed my video on how to add animations to your step counter. And make sure you go check out my other tutorial videos. And if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you around.